Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of Enrichment, where we talk to small business owners and entrepreneurs on strategies and best practices. Now, although small businesses are often at a disadvantage when competing with bigger companies, they can always have one advantage. They can be smarter than a competition. So let's get right to it. This week, our subject is value. I recently read a blog by Seth Godin entitled Time and Focus and Energy. It was a short one minute read, but it got me thinking. As Seth says, time, focus, and energy are all finite. And the way we allocate our time and emotional energy determines what gets done. So if also by default, it determines what we value. Of course, value has many definitions. On the one hand, monetary value is assigned to goods and services based on how many people want them and their scarcity. Value is also assigned by how much regard we have for something. It's important, it's usefulness, and it's emotional attachment. We ascribe value to intangibles, such as family, travel, reputation, spirituality, hobbies, and sentimental items that remind us of people, places, or special occasions. We also consign value to money, how important it is in terms of status, security, and of course, its ability to provide us with the things we value, which means we're forced to sacrifice our time that we would rather spend on travel and hobbies and time with the family, et cetera, to pursue the accumulation of money so that we can spend the remaining time on those things we value. Now, a pessimist might call this a lose-lose proposition. I had a friend, Bob. He loved to travel. He traveled all over the world. He's been to just about any country you can think of. He's been to China, Vietnam, India, Japan, South Africa, Australia. He's been to Morocco, all across Europe, South America, Central America, and everywhere in between. So how did they accomplish this? Well, it was so important to him that he put travel first above everything. He was in sales, and he was really good at it. So he would accumulate his money for a year or two, and then he'd take six months off and travel, a full six months. If his job was waiting for him at the end, great. If not, he'd get another one. Travel came first. He obviously wasn't married and he didn't have many attachments because the thing he most valued, travel, came first. Now, obviously, very few of us are as single-minded and focused on one thing as he was. Most of us have a host of things that we value, but do we allocate our time accordingly? That 24 hours we all have only gets us so far each day. Then it resets, another day gone. We all wake up every day with the same 24 hours. We all need to allocate time to accomplish what we need in order to support and pursue what we value. We all have to compromise every day between what we spend our time on, the things we value, and the amount of money we make, and a host of other considerations. Now, I haven't even mentioned the daily crises that derail our plans and steal away the time we intended to spend on business, etc. In his blog, Seth asked, if we audited our day in six-minute increments, what would we find? Well, I don't know about you, but even if this were possible, I wouldn't want to do it. I'm sure I'd be ashamed by what I found. It comes down to time, focus, and energy. I'll conclude by suggesting that we all need to reassess what we value, what we hope to achieve, and how we should be spending our time. Are we letting other people's emergencies rob us of our time? Do we often find ourselves backtracking because we didn't plan well enough or we didn't know enough? Are we placing value on things that aren't 
in the grand scheme, really important. And of course, the really big question, how many days do we have left? And how are we going to spend them? Anne Rand, Russian-born American writer and philosopher said, happiness is that case of consciousness which provides and pr proceeds from the achievement of one's values. Well, I hope you found that useful. If you'd like to further discuss anything regarding this topic or any other small business strategy, reach out to me at rich at speakingofsuccess.us. And before I forget, I'm excited to tell you that my book, Build Your Rep, is now available in paperback and ebook through Amazon. Give it a read and let me know what you think about it. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. All right. Well, as I said, that's it for this week. And with any luck, we'll talk again next week. Thanks. Bye.